Welcome to Tech Tip Tuesday. I'm Steve Dynan, CEO of Carbon. I'm Jeff Westfall. And today we're going to talk about another one of our installments about suspension theory and suspension geometry and, and components and how to make your car handle better. Yep. Uh, on our last video, we talked about scrub radius and uh, how when you move your tire out, it adds more leverage and then the tire pulls the steering wheel and it kicks in your hand and makes the car unstable and hard to drive. And how rubber bushings that the OEMs put in the car allow the suspension to deflect and cause even more instability. Yeah. Assuming that you want larger wheels and tires because you want your car to handle better, and we also talked about how wider wheels and tires add more feel with the scrub radius, we don't want to get rid of them, we just want to correct for the extra leverage. Tune your suspension system for the component that makes a change in the grip of the vehicle. The more grip you make, the more roll you create, the more deflection you have. So how do we combat that com deflection? Yes. And a lot of people just lower their car and put big wheels and tires on it because it looks cool and they don't deal with the side effects of it and then the car is just not fun to drive. Yep. Yeah. And, and the reason we buy a nice car, you know, BMW, Porsche, AMG, Mercedes, Audi, Audi RS, is because we like to drive. So we don't want to we don't want to destroy that feel or that fun because that's what you spent the money for. I think particularly in nowadays environment, you want the experience behind the wheel, regardless of the speed of the vehicle. But that feeling you get from the steering wheel and the enjoyment from driving the machine is what's being lost with modern day heavy electric utilitarian cars. Yes, and we want that joy back. Right. So on, on the rear of the car, you have what's called tow links, and these are for adjusting the tow, but they also add stability suspension system. And from the OEM, they have rubber bushings on the end. Sometimes they even have a curve in them, and they actually even flex, the arm itself flexes a little bit. Yeah. Um, so when you have this extra leverage, like we talked about, it pulls. What happens is the rubber bushing compresses and the rear toe changes on the car. It honestly feels like when you put really wide sticky wheels and tires on it and you go to the racetrack, it feels like someone's in a trunk with a steering wheel driving the car with you. Yeah. <laughs> not, not a fun yeah. experience. The, the rear car squirms quite a bit. It it's does. the dynamic toe of the OEM suspension geometry. Right. So what we do is we put a, a monoball link in, or a rod end link in, excuse me. It's basically a male rod end like you'd have in a race car and it hooks into the original suspension attachment points and takes all the flex out of the back of the car and it's also adjustable for tow. And the tow adjustment is more rock solid and slips less than the yes. OEM style. Yes. Um, the, we also have eccentric blockers that go in the slots to stop the eccentric from slipping because you can adjust the tow with this because sometimes when yep. you get a really sticky wheel and tire and you go to the racetrack and you have a, scurb a, a curb strike, the line will change and, and, and stay at a new position that you don't want it to be in. <laughs> yeah, it could be a curb strike, could be a large bump. Uh, on OEM vehicles, I generally align mine at least once a year just because driving around hitting bumps, they slip and they move and the alignment never stays the same. It always changes. Yes. Uh, this also has a whole lot of precision to the handling of the car because now the tow is the tow, it stays fixed. Yep. You know what the car is going to do all the time. Um, there, there's also some added benefits and some small side effects of this. A rubber bushing is actually a spring. So you tighten the rubber bushing up at right height and when the suspension goes up and down, the, the, the rubber has to flex in order for the suspension to move. And this makes this actually suspension stiffer. So when you take the rubber out and put these in, it moves better over bumps, it articulates better and the car actually increases ride quality. Yep. Now the side effect is the rubber is there to stop noise. So when you hit reflectors on the highway or expansion cracks and things yep. like that. Changes in pavement. Changes in pavement. You're going to hear those more than you are with the rubber bushing. For sure. You'll probably feel them more as well. Yeah. Uh, so the question is, is the ride quality and the stability and the handling more important to you or the noise? That's a, that's a personal choice you have to make. I like to drive fast. I can't imagine owning a car without this. I just don't like the rubber bushings when you put big wheels and tires on and a lot of grip. But you know, particularly with the torque the motor cars make and yes. how much suspension movement they have, I like the precision. Well, that's the other thing that happens if we could pick this up again. By the way, it's a very good point, Jeff. If you're making a lot of power and one wheel has more traction than the other yep. because of the pavement or you're going over a bump, it will actually flex the bushing and cause the car to steer or snake while you're accelerating. So yeah. this also adds stability on just accelerating in a straight line. I think that you have a culture of people who like to go to car shows and they leave a car show and do something excessive and you have a lot of incidents that occur. I mean, this is exactly that example. Yes. Right. And then in the front we have, now in the front you have a diagonal arm that goes front and back on the car and it's to create stability under braking. Yep. Uh, it's longitudinally controlling the suspension system and they put big rubber donuts in these much bigger than the tow links. Yep. Because you're, because they're going fore and aft and that's the first thing the car hits when it hits a, when it hits a bump, first thing the car sees when it hits a bump and it moves the suspension system back and forth and absorbs the energy and makes the car quiet. Yep. 
What we do is we put a through ball joint here. And the reason we use a through ball joint instead of a, a rod end or a monoball like you'd have on a race car is we want it to actually have a little bit of give because like we say, it's absorbing energy longitudinally, not laterally. Yep. And it will transmit even more noise than this will into the car. For sure. So we do uh, we do a through ball joint as opposed to a racing bearing. And, this, and we cut one apart here for you to look at. It has like a, a, a liner inside of it. Uh, but what that does is that makes the joint quiet, absorbs some energy. Now it has a little bit more play than a monoball or a rod end, but this is a street car, not a race car. It takes about 90% of the play out, but it has far less noise than one of these. Right, so you gain the precision yes. without the total noise increase of the ball joint. Correct. And then these bearings also have a lot of preload in them, so it puts a little bit of compression in the nylon, takes play at them so the ball joint doesn't move around and make popping noises are, are things when you hit a... And what you'll feel as a driver is with these installed, the steering wheel will feel like it translates every piece of information from the road to your hand, almost like you think to turn left and the car starts to move left. It becomes very intuitive when these are installed. It's also braking stability. When you have the big rubber bushing, the, these caster changes on the car and moves back and forth when you hit bumps while you're braking hard and the car actually snakes you know, when you try and brake, this takes that play out and when you brake, the car stays straight. That's a great point you made about the car snaking on the brake. So modern cars with anti-lock brake systems, the way anti-lock brakes work is that once the wheel stops, the system releases the brake to let it turn again. The function of them both locking independently can also make the car start to snake down the road and this will help combat that. Yeah. So if you're adding more sticky wheels and tires, wider wheels and tires in particular with more grip and you're lowering your car and adding camber where you're actually putting a lot more load through your suspension system, you need to be able to control that load and stop the bushing deflection so the car is stable and fun to drive. Now let's talk a little bit about bushings. A lot of people sell urethane bushings. A lot. And we talked about how the rubber sidewall has to flex. Mm -hmm. Urethane bushing is so rigid it won't flex. Correct. Okay. And what happens is the actual suspension part will spin inside the urethane bushing and make a squeaking noise. Yep. And then you have to constantly lube them. But also it makes the ride really rough because the rainwater will hit the urethane bushing, run the grease out that you have in there, it will stick, it will ride like a brick, then you grease it up, it will ride better again. And then the grease will wash out and it will go back to squeaking again. Yep. And so for us, bushings are not a good long-term solution. Some people buy them because they think it's gonna ride better or make less noise, but we find that it rides worse and makes more noise than the bearings and has all kinds of maintenance necessary to go along with it as well. Thank you for joining our latest installment of Tech Tip Tuesday. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any videos. Or go to carbon.com for information on our monoballs and tow links and any of our installers nationwide.